So just now we have to pray for all of being. So let's reset our sutras, meta sutra bandi. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambhukasa Yadanubhavato 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 Sukha Sukhri Sogosa Bhapantensi Napasati Ewa Madhi Gunu Petan Praitan Dhan Panamahe Karaniya Madhaku Salena Yanta Sandam Padam Bimisa Sako Uzuza, Suzuza, Suwaso, Chata Muru, Anati Mani, Sando Tokosa, Suvarosa, Abakapo, Sunedo, Nanu Kaito, Naza Kota, Masikensi, Yena, when you pray, Uba Udiyong. Toki no wa kemi no wantu Sapa sata puantu suki sata Jeke si pana budati Tata wa tarado wa na wa dita Jika wa iwa manta pisi mara taka nuka tula Taita wa iwa adeta iwa duye watandi awi dure Buddha wa sambu eti wa sapa sata pundu suki sata Na pro prani kau beta na di minyata kata si na kaisi Piyayo dana pika tinga ninga minyata dukha meisya Madaya daniya bauta mayuta ika bauta manure khi Ewan di sapa budetu mana sambawi apri mana Mede sa sapa loka sambe mana sambawi apri mana Oda no sa tiri rinsa Ata mara awiya mata padam Taita saya ni seno wa Siyano ya wa tata wida meiro Eda ntara eda iti ya Pyama mita wihara mita mahu Taita isa lupa gama Sira wa tata ni na sampano Kami tu wilia kita na isa do kapati ya puna reti Iti bito bhagawa arahan sama sambodho Vai sasra na sama no sukado loga vidu Anodro puri sama sarati Tadari wa mano kana bhagawa bhagawa Swekha do bhagawa tatamo Sande chiko akali ko, eipati ko pani ko, Pesata wirita po wiyui, Taupri pano po ato sangoka sango, Utaupri pano po ato sangoka sango, Nyaya pri pano po ato sangoka sango, Kame say pri pano po ato sangoka sango, Yari ra sa ta ri puri sa yu a ni e ta puri sa mo ka la E ta mo a do sa mo ka sa ngo 
Au neo pau neo, kaki neo indri kraniyo, nodran pungya ketan lokasa, ewa bautan tran dana dama tangi sa beko, payang wa samita dan wa lomanto na iteti, yang dongli meta wa mingalinsa, yo zamana posukuna ta sado, Pabeo dosu pina akantang, Pouda nupa wina wina samindu, Yandong ni maita wa milisa, Yoda mana potukuna tasado, Pabeo dosu pina akantang, Tamma nupa wina wina samindu, Yandong ni maita wa milisa, Yoda mana potukuna tasado, Pabe o do su pina akandang, Sangha nu pa we na we na sa mindu, Pawa du sa pa ming la re khan du sa pa di wa ta, Sa pa bo da nu pa we na dra su ki buon du te, Pawa du sa pa ming la re khan du sa pa di wa ta, Sa pa dhamma nu pa we na dra su ki buon du te, Pohadu tapa mingla rekhandu tapa diwata Tapa sangha nupa wena Sada suki pojude Sadu, sadu, sadu May you be happy, Bande, for all of human beings. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Heart Sutra. 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 So historically, I think Buddha's first Dharma wheel, I think, uh, eventually, the about the four noble truth, uh, that is Pali. I, I think about the Pali tradition that come from that. <coughs> now the uh, what you call Buddhisattva uh, Yana. That is at Rajgir. It's a Buddha. Also the also the uh, second Dharma wheel. That's Panyaparamita Sutra. So, I think the country which received Panyaparamita Sutra first, first I, think, mm. the, I think the, yes, I think, uh, uh, almost like 2,000 years, Bali, uh, uh, the Chinese. Chinese. So, among mm. the uh, people who mm. recite uh, mm. Heart Sutra, mm. the senior mm. most mm. is Chinese mm. Buddhist brothers, mm. sisters. Just like that, the Pali Talia, His Holiness, our returning back to Tibetan, what Taji Re, Chen Sungendi, Burmese, and Chen so his holiness is uh, this is a sutra of auspicious in Pali that they have recited the and Pali the tradition Yongra is Chene, actually the foundation uh, of all the Buddhist teachings and uh, 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 the external appearance uh, visible to all 
ดาเดเนชาวกุมรีอาชิจิสุนดาเดเนชาวกุมรีอาชิจิสุนดาเดเนชาวกุมรีอาชิจิสุนดาเดเนชาวกุมรีอาชิจิสุนดาเดเนช
that is comparable to the incomparables. It is a mantra that is totally that totally pacifies all sufferings. It will not deceive you. Therefore, know it to be true. I proclaim the mantra of the perfection of wisdom. Tayata gate gate paragate prasam gate bodhiya soha shariputra. It is in this way the great bodhisattvas train themselves in the profound perfection of wisdom. At that moment, the blessed one arose from his concentration and said to the noble Avalokiteshvara, Well said, well said. That is just how it is, my son, just how it is. The profound perfection of wisdom should be practiced exactly as you have been explained. Then the great, then the one gone thus will be truly delighted. When the Blessed One has spoken these words, the Venerable Shariputra and the Bodhisattvas, the great beings, the noble Alphalokiteshvara, and the entire gatherings of gods, humans, Asuras and Gandavas, Gandavas were overjoyed and they praised what the Blessed One has said. This completes uh, uh, reading the translation of uh, Heart Sutra. Those three lamas in line. The first one is the throne holder or the representative of Lama Thongkhapa. The second one is a Pembo a hat. The third one is Talung Shepton Rinpoche. And these are the Chinese who are reciting the Heart Sutra. Euro. Uh, there uh, are four lines of prayers after uh, the Chinese Heart Sutra. Well, may all the three delusions be eliminated and may uh, the wisdom of uh, empty wisdom 
of uh, emptiness glow. And may all the external and internal obstacles be eliminated or pacified. And may I be able to engage uh, in the Bodhisattva deeds. So the first two lines uh, speaks of uh, the attainment of uh, uh, the certain uh, uh, states or liberation and enlightenment. And this uh, uh, pacification of uh, delusions cannot be attained just through prayers, but through the practice of uh, wisdom. And because of that, it prays that may I be able to may the wisdom of emptiness grow in me. And for that, there are lots of external internal problems. And therefore, may the obstacles be pacified. And finally, it says, may I be able to engage in the Buddhist sattva deeds. So this uh, uh, short prayer actually encompasses a lot uh, of uh, the practice uh, uh, of Buddha Dhamma. Now, after this is the chanting in Vietnam. Vietnam is chanting. <laughs> Looks like the Vietnamese are also chanting the uh, heart sutra. Traditionally, Vietnam is also uh, not only a Buddhist, but a Mahayana Buddhist country. Vietnam, 
Yeah, yeah. There are so many Vietnamese uh, refugees in different parts of the world. Wherever they are living, they have preserved their own traditions and uh, religion, and they have been really successful in that respect. And in the meantime, there are lots of uh, Buddhists even from Vietnam coming here. And they have really deep uh, devotion and strong faith in Buddha Dharma. Now, uh, uh, there is no need for us to recite uh, the Heart Sutra, just a senza. The homage uh, to the uh, to the mother of all the three Buddhas, which is uh, inconceivable, uh, unspeakable, and which is not born, which doesn't cease. So that's the meaning of the stanza. stanza and after that, there is the. Uh, Homage to the uh, three parts that gave rise to three kinds of liberations. One who has to a better origination, uh, 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 as uh, having no cessation or um, the rising. So all the uh, eight aspects of emptiness, one who has propounded these uh, truths, uh, I venerate uh, through the noble being. That's Ainogajuna's uh, uh, stanza in foundation of uh, the uh, uh, root of our wisdom, sutra, uh, wisdom treatise. The first one uh, speaks of the matrayana, matra, sorry, which is Taida Karikata Prakat of some Buddhists. It means that from now onwards, for maybe six, seven days, we'll conduct uh, uh, some teachings. And the sequence of our uh, proce uh, procedure towards uh, enlightenment is being uh, uh, spoken in this context of the uh, mantra. Right now, the situation is that uh, we have delusions, not only delusions, but we seem to willingly embrace the delusions and we do not think of its negativities, but we consider them to be our own natural part. And when we have our anger, we seem uh, as if it is defending us. It is in our nature to be angry and uh, confronted. And then if we have some conducive factors, we are naturally attached to it and we feel quite natural about it. So we are almost like embracing willingly the uh, delusions. So from this stage, we should transcend a little bit and then think that the delusions are actually negativities to be eliminated, to be abandoned. And uh, after recognizing the fault of the delusions, then gradually we have to abandon them and finally completely eliminate them forever. So whether or not, uh, you can't actually do that on uh, is something we really need to consider or we need to analyze. So in that respect, we have to look at the nature of the delusions and uh, attachment and anger arises of ignorance. Ignorance is a misperception, misunderstanding, distorted view. So long as it's a distorted view, misperception, it has its own antidote uh, which, uh, which understands or apprehends the reality. So long as it's a distorted thought, there is always an antidote mind. So thinking of the nature of the ignorance, if you look at its nature, it's something that can be eliminated. The on top, if you look at the nature of the mind as luminous, luminous and its clarity or cognitive nature, then you can uh, actually uh, think of the possibility that actually it is possible to relieve us of all the delusions. Then uh, we actually come to this uh, first stage, gate. So from this first uh, ori uh, uh, our original stage of ordinariness, we go to the first level, gate. So where we start, 
abandoning or pacifying our delusions with the vision of uh, the state free from all these fabricated delusions. And then when we speak of the second gate, the actual antidote to get rid of uh, 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 ignorance or the delusions is the view of emptiness, the wisdom mind. So wisdom mind is something which understands perfectly the reality as it is. So when once you attain uh, the spontaneous meditative stability uh, based on emptiness, then you reach the third God, Gadi. And one through constant familiarization, habituation, when you reach the state of non-dualistic appearance of emptiness, where the mind ab abides completely non-dualistically in emptiness, then it becomes paragadhi. So when you have direct perception of uh, uh, emptiness, you have achieved uh, the part of seeing or part of insight. So at that time, you are able to uh, get rid of the grosser level of delusions which are uh, philosophically or conceptually imputed or philosophically acquired delusions are uh, eliminated uh, completely. And for that to happen, we have to practice the path of uh, truth of path and th thereby constantly habituating the truth of path or uh, wisdom of emptiness. And slowly, we can also think of um, eliminating the innate uh, uh, spontaneous delusions. So then we reach the Parasamgate. So in Mahayana, uh, the innate uh, spontaneous delusions and their latencies or potentials or stains or imprints. When all these are uh, eliminated completely, then it has uh, the attainment of Bodhi Soha. So therefore, Tantrayana is a method to achieve the Bodhi Soha or the complete enlightenment. So this is an additional kind of part in order to uh, uh, attain the complete enlightenment. So in the following days, to f uh, uh, we will be having the teaching. Actually, this is the sequence by which we are going to uh, move forward towards enlightenment. The fact that the mind is naturally uh, in the nature of uh, uh, purity. Uh, in we speak, uh, and it's important thing on that. We speak in the uh, Sutrayana that uh, uh, that there should be natural purity in order to have the purity of the mind. So since we have natural purity, uh, mind can also be naturally pure, and because of that natural purity, then we can actually actualize the cessation of all the delusions. And that fact that the uh, delusions are advantages also add to this understanding. So whether it's the attainment of uh, liberation, or in this respect, uh, uh, when connected with Kala Chakra, it's the attainment of for Kayas, or the Kaya, or for bodies, or for states of Kala Chakra. So that is what we call as Bodhi Soha. So this has a lot of significance. So this uh, mantra of uh, uh, ha Sutra, or the essence of uh, wisdom. So uh, in order to achieve this wisdom, we have the method side. We, uh, we have the three parts where, uh, uh, which are uh, illuminated in the supplication of the ornament of clarification, clear realization by Maitreya, the three parts. Uh, the parts of uh, Hinayana, the parts of Mahayana, two parts of Hinayana Maya, and that of Mahayana three. So that's what we have recited, and I don't feel we need to go <coughs> more into reciting uh, verses. So first we repeat, uh, taking uh, the refuge mind, and uh, we recite taking the refuge mind and generation of uh, Bodhicitta. We have come here not for business purpose, or there's a danger of uh, get, uh, uh, getting flu, and we have not come here to buy flu. Earlier, when we used to come here, 
Uh, earlier, it was almost uh, certain that when once you come here for a pilgrimage, in my case, it was uh, it was um, uh, certain that I would uh, get a flu. But this time, actually, uh, I'm quite healthy. Of course, uh, there is some kind of uh, discomfort that sometimes it's really hot, sometimes it's quite cold, and then we have a lot of difficulties. Perhaps you might be remembering your own horns behind. And uh, when you are wet by the uh, uh, or drenched uh, by the rain, you also might miss your on uh, your warm uh, rooms or or home. So, uh, despite all these difficulties, the fact that you have come here is because we have this uh, devotion, faith, and conviction in Buddha's teachings. And as we have discussed uh, in this uh, mantra. Uh, the, uh, the part of uh, accumulation, preparation, inside meditation, and then part of normal training. In order to transcend through this part, this is the first beginning through which we should go forward. So through uh, this kind of uh, religious teaching, uh, for it to be uh, effective from the part of the uh, teacher, uh, the motivation should be really pure. I should not be uh, arrogant um, by uh, sitting on this big throne. Uh, I should not wish for any kind of praise or offerings or fame. As we, if I fall into these kind of extremes of uh, delusional minds, and then I will be following, even though I'm um, not going to give a teaching, I will be cheating people or lying, or I will be uh, for uh, I will be I will uh, be drawn uh, with the attitude of all uh, Walter and eight Walter pursuits. And so, so of course you might not have any proud uh, pride being on that ground, but still you might want uh, to you know cheat or uh, boost of having attained, the, uh, having received this teaching. And then ex uh, you might also think that uh, you might also uh, do the, uh, do, uh, you might uh, to some extent exploit uh, other people claiming that you have received teachings of His Holiness. And with a, uh, with a mass of uh, religious uh, practice, you should not deserve, you know, deceive people. So from the side of the students, if the motivation is not pure, then all our energies put forward are waste. So from both sides, from the side of the teacher as well as the students, there should be pure motivation. So what does pure motivation mean is it should be motivated by the refuge mind. And ref <coughs> when motivated by, uh, when complemented by the refuge mind, the practice become a Buddhist practice. When you speak of uh, Buddha, we uh, tend to think only from the historical uh, perspective, the portrait of Buddha Shakyamuni that we display in the altars or, the, in the, or in the monasteries or in the temples. And also if you speak or think of the uh, text to be the actual Dharma that we put uh, on the altars. And then when we think of the monks as uh, the actual Sangha, then these are mistakes. Of course, we can refer them as uh, Sangha, even though they may not be uh, actually Sangha. So what does Buddha, uh, Buddha mean? Buddha, according to Bo all the Buddhist tradition is, and the one who is, in the uh, who is who has manifested in the emanation form. But in this context of Mayana, we're speaking of the Buddha with four states, four aspects. For, for the enjoined body, one, uh, there should be the uh, Dharmakaya, and Gyanakaya should be there. And then Rupakaya all arises. So all these are interconnected. The Buddha with four states. It's important for you to uh, understand the nature of Buddha in this context. So when you speak of Dharma, to it, through the realizations and the quality of cessation within the Buddha, uh, these kind of cessation, sorry, these kind of cessation are the ultimate form of dharma. To attain these kind of dharmas, <coughs> uh, from the time of the trainees, uh, since the 
、uh, part of sin, you start abandoning or pacifying the delusions. So all those、uh, pacifiers and all those seized nature are the tamas. So those beings who have these realizational and sensational qualities, these are known as sangha. So in this、uh, Mahayana、uh, tradition,、uh, we should、uh, think of the Mahayana Buddha, Mahayana Dharma, and Mahayana Sangha. So with this in mind, then we take refuge. The reason why we take refuge in them is to Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Until I attain enlightenment, I take refuge. So we say until enlightenment. So the reason is、uh, for attaining enlightenment. Even though we can speak of liberation or enlightenment in different contexts, even though there are different kinds of enlightenment, in this context, we are speaking of the great enlightenment.、Uh, in sublime continuum, we speak of the, the seven spots of、uh, Vajra, Buddha, Dharma, uh, uh, Sangha, element. The enlightenment. So, from our own, the, from our part,、uh, as the cause of refuge, we take、uh, in the Buddhas who have already arisen in that perfect state. And the reason or the purpose is for one's own attainment of future Buddha and future Dharma. And this can only happen、uh, if we have the element. Or the、uh, the essential of、uh, Buddha nature within us, which is devoid of uh, uh, this kind of、uh, Buddha nature, when、uh, purified of all the advantages,、uh, stains that kind of purified nature is what we call as Buddha. <coughs> so, until enlightenment,、uh, I take refuge. If we have this kind of understanding of enlightenment, then that's a Mahayana kind of、uh, attitude of.、Uh, Taking refuge, aspiration of taking refuge. So, this kind of、uh, practice should be complemented by the superior insight and that of、uh, single potent,、uh, concentrative quality. <coughs> so the bodhicitta mind uh, uh, and the uh, six uh, perfections complemented, practice of perfection complemented by the bodhicitta through this practice. May I become a Buddha, and may all the activities that I engage in become causes、uh, for the attainment of highest enlightenment. So, in order to do benefit sentient beings, may I be become, become a Buddha. So, this is the meaning of these two verses. So, if you have these, so then you can take、uh, Buddha as the instructor,、uh, the Dharma as his actual instruction. And one we actually need to、uh, actualize within us, and the sangha as an example to follow. Then, as for bodhicitta, it is uh, one uh, that、uh, transcends the lower path where we engage in、uh, the practice of、uh, relieving or、uh, relieving all others'、uh, sufferings. So, from the part of the lama on the throne, there should be moderation. And all the and disciples or students listening should also should have、uh, should also have the same kind of attitude. And with this kind of aspiration, we should conduct the teachings. So we are going to recite、uh, these verses together、uh, three times. To Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha until enlightenment, I take refuge in you.、Uh, through the practice of generosity and, and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. To Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha until enlightenment, I take refuge in you. By the Power of、uh, gener- accumulations like generosity and so forth. May I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. To Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and enli- enlightenment, I take refuge in you. By the power of accumulations like generosity and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. So today being the first day, this is the proclamation of the part of the、uh, Lama,、uh, giving permission to all the、uh, celestials, non-humans,、uh, to come forward and listen to the teachings. So usually, traditionally, this is、uh, recited by the Lamas when they have、uh, 
sufficient time, and he's only used to do the practice uh, on occasions when he had sufficient time or, or for some special occasions. And this is one. Uh, and this is actually found in one of the sutras, supplication to Buddha Shakyamuni, who had propounded the interdependent origination based on his experience. This application is found in Nagarjuna's text. <laughs> so today, as we have uh, discussed about it a little bit earlier, <coughs> actual dharma is something that you can you should cultivate internally. It is not something that you can do externally or through external appearance. So because of that, whether your mind is directed towards Dharma, if your mind is actually directed towards Dharma, then it becomes an actual Dharma practice. The Buddha's teaching should be uh, supported by the refuge mind. And if it's supported or motivated by that mind, then it becomes a Buddhist, uh, Buddhist practice. For example, refraining from the non-virtuous activities are lying, adultery, killing all and so forth. All the rest of the <coughs> religious practitioners like Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, all of them have uh, to some extent the practice of abiding by the ten virtuous activities and pacifying the non-virtuous activities. So this is a uh, common kind of practice when it comes to the practice of uh, pleasing the uh, local um, uh, deity spirits or not. This is a different kind of practice. Other than that, refraining from harming others, practicing loving uh, compassion and uh, contentment, these kind of teachings plus the ten virtuous activities, these are being practiced by all religious traditions, major religious traditions. So, <coughs> preceded by uh, the motivation of uh, you're taking refuge, then uh, whatever you do becomes a Buddhist practice. <coughs> uh, non Buddhist uh, practitioners take uh, refuge in the Ishvara or um, in their own <coughs> deities, and then, therefore, based on this kind of uh, refuge mind, they engage in on the practice of uh, uh, superior uh, practice of. Uh, meditation and obedience also. These are kind of non Buddhist practice. In the same manner, Buddhist practice should become only can become only Buddhist practice if it is complemented by the refuge mind. Then <coughs> the reason we are we, we are practicing Dharma is uh, in order to attain uh, enlightenment. <coughs> For a Mahayana to be, a ma uh, for a Mahayana practitioner, for his practice to be a Mahayana practice, it should be complemented by Buddhist aspiration. So, with a selfish motive, no matter whatever kind of uh, um, a Mahayana teachings you might try to implement, they will never become Mahayana t uh, practice. So, therefore, uh, the refuge is one uh, practice that surpasses. Uh, the, our, our practice from the lower ones, uh, from the non-Buddhist, and Buddhist diet one that surpasses from the lower parts. So for our <coughs> practice to become concrete, even though it may, uh, we no, may not achieve or accomplish realizations instantly, for, uh, it's important for us to lay the ground or the foundation. For example, if you are to do a construction first, you need to find a spot and then try to level the uh, spot, and then uh, we plan the map of the, uh, con uh, the building to be constructed. And as we acquire more uh, facilities, uh, then we start building it slowly, slowly. So this is some kind of uh, uh, progress of constructing our paths towards enlightenment. So if you work hard and precisely and prepare, then it will really happen. Blessing uh, to be attained. You have to exert your own uh, pressure. You have to do your own activity in order to acquire blessing. 
it cannot come to you naturally. Even when Buddha Shakyamuni was here, those who have no devotion and faith in Buddha Shakyamuni, they didn't get much blessing from him. So real blessing comes. As uh, is in the saying of Kadamba some masters, that whether or not the uh, Lama has a greater blessing uh, depends entirely on the students and not the Lama. The Buddha Shakyamuni says, uh, Buddhas do not really uh, wash our negativities, uh, nor can he transfer his own uh, attainments, or not, neither can he lift you from our ordinary states. But through the, uh, his teachings of truth, we can only attain enlightenment. So in this respect, it's important for us to be cautious, uh, to be mindful of all our activities and practice properly. So when I do uh, contact religious stations, I try to give an introductory nod or not so on Buddhism. This is very important because without really understanding what Dharma is, you cannot practice Dharma properly. So first you need to uh, recognize or know what actually Dharma is about, the Dharma that you are going to practice all about. So therefore, in order to give an introduction to Dharma, basically it goes like this. We have so many uh, different religious traditions in this world. So we need to know the differences of these uh, religious uh, traditions and the unique qualities of each of these and the differences of these uh, uh, practices in uh, descending from Lanka Sutra, uh, Bhattashikamani says, uh, there are parts of uh, the celestials, uh, the Brahmas, parts of um, Brahmas, and uh, it speaks of different kinds of parts because of different mental disposition of uh, different beings or mental delusions accordingly, but there are different kinds of parts. So the part of um, humans and celestials, uh, the part of Brahma, then part of Hira, part of Pratikabuddha or Solito realizes, and the Buddha uh, Mahayana uh, uh, part, uh, and which consists of two, uh, the Sutrayana or uh, Paramitya part, and that of Tantra part. Those to speak of the Buddhist part. Uh, all of the major religious traditions speak of uh, with respect to this life how one should refrain from harming others where we should practice this uh, 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 practice contentment <coughs> and loving kindness they all speaks in the context of this life where we acquire uh, happiness mainly for human humans and that too we speak of, uh, in Buddhism, we speak of three kinds of sufferings. Uh, in the uh, practice or, or the parts of this, I mean, humans and solutions, uh, they have developed a renunciation with regards to this uh, suffering of, of pain. And based on that uh, renunciation, the practice of refraining from negativities in order to avoid suffering of pain is taught. So with those, uh, with, uh, those with new quality of concentrative power, uh, where there is no practice of vipassana and samadhi, all these practitioners uh, emphasize on uh, bringing quality uh, to this life, and bringing, uh, making yourself a good person in this life. And they all promises you a pure land by practicing strict obedience of uh, 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 these are uh, the ethics or ethical disciplines and so forth. So then the uh, part of Brahmas speaks of their um, the, the concentrated qualities of uh, concentration and formless realms. So by the practice of uh, mundane uh, super, superior insight, one can also attain birth in the concentrative realm. And in this context, they seem to have developed renunciation with regards to the uh, mm, suffering of uh, change. 
and most of them practice uh, seem to accept uh, the concept of creation. <coughs> uh, Jainis, or Jainism doesn't believe in uh, creator, and Buddhism doesn't believe in creation. Uh, other than that, rest of them uh, seem uh, believe in creation. In the path of Brahma, <coughs> they accept mm, rebirth and they accept karma, but ultimately they say that everything is actually mm, created by karma ultimately. So, majority of the religious uh, practice or traditions fall in line with the path of Brahmas. Then, <coughs> recognizing the root of delusions as ign uh, recognizing ignorance as ig the root of all delusions and so on, so under the influence of a delusion, a strong dislike uh, towards ignorance and an aspiration to eliminate ignorance completely with that aspiration should you practice then it becomes a fruitful practice and that kind of uh, attainment the cessation of uh, delusions and in this context we speak of two kinds of liberation the liberation in the context of the Hinayanan path and liberation in the context of the Mahinan path so and because of the difference in the accumulations, we uh, speak of the different kinds of uh, path, like the parts of the Hinayan path and the Mahayan path. And uh, with uh, the uh, uh, knowledge obscuration or, or obscuration to omniscience uh, as the one to be eliminated completely, if you have such an aspiration to get completely enlightened, uh, in order to do that, because we are aspiring to fulfill the wishes of all sentient beings, it seems as if knowledge obscuration is obscuring you from uh, reaching out to millions of sentient beings. And because with this inspiration, uh, where your more emphasis on uh, is on eliminating eliminating the stains of the delusions or the knowledge obscurations, so. Uh, that is what we call as uh, the Mahayana path. From another uh, dimension, we can also say like, well, I sh uh, want to share here. Once we had a gathering of uh, religious uh, uh, leaders from different parts, and there was one division of Islamism uh, called Sufi, and they speak of uh, the practice of uh, uh, compassion quite Extensively. So one of the professors of uh, Sufi uh, uh, tradition uh, spoke to me, uh, spoke in the public uh, in this manner. So perhaps you might have heard it uh, a lot, but I want to repeat again. There is no repetition, and though there is no <coughs> fault in repeating. So basically, he says all of the major religious traditions try to answer three questions. What are the three questions? We always speak of I, and we have an innate feeling of I. What is I? We say, I, don't want, hap I want happiness, I don't want suffering. So what is that I? So that's one question. Second question is, is there any beginning to that I? Is there any end to that I? That's the third question. So, three questions. What is I? Is there any uh, beginning or any end? And those three questions. In order to give answers, we have different answers from these different religious traditions. <laughs> so if you try to answer what is I, <coughs> except Buddhism, majority of the religious traditions speak of a self which uh, rules your body, which is like the owner of the body, we tend to think my body my mind. The fact that we speak of this, actually it's true. It's true word. It's true claim. But as we speak of my body, my mind, even though 
the continuation of mind existed from the time of birth. Still, if you speak of my body, we never feel as if this uh, body existed from the time of a uh, conception. But we, when we speak of I, we tend to think that I will be there at the time of death, I was there at the time of birth. And also in the context of the mind, when you relate to your mind, through experiences and through studies, you have matured a lot and you have developed more understandings. So this is something we all know. But still, when it comes to thought of our eye, which rules both speech and mind, we tend to have a distinct identity of self. I at the time of birth, I at the time of death. Especially those who believe in rebirths, uh, they think of an I which comes from past to this and which goes from this to the next life. The physical body has not come from past to this and will not go to the next. So one which comes from past and goes to the next, they feel that there must be a self. And self comes from past and we go to the next. And if we are to try to uh, point out or an eye from our physical body, then it's difficult. Uh, it's not uneasy. It's not easy. So they are taught it's better to have an eye uh, identity of a self as distinct from the physical body. So then the concept of a soul or in Hindi, the Atma has come. In Buddhism, we say that kind of uh, self. Yeah, it has different uh, aspects to it, criteria to it. <coughs> and that uh, I, uh, according to the non-Buddhist uh, philosophers, uh, it's partless. It doesn't have any part. <coughs> Even though there's a lot of changes within physical body or mind, that eye doesn't change. It's almost permanent. It's permanent. So it's unitary, first criteria. Second is, it's permanent. And then substantially independent. So they tend to have a distinct identity, substantially existent. So they tend to think of a unitary, a permanent, and uh, independent kind of uh, self. So in Buddhism, we say, <laughs> Buddha Shakyamuni himself, as we have discussed earlier, said uh, the thought of a self is the thought of demons. Uh, so because of that arises the fields. And, and the physical body is empty of that self and so forth. As I seem to exist as autonomous to our body, we give credit. Uh, to our own appearance or perception and then say that there is a self as distinct from the body or the mind. And then philosophically we impute the possibility of such an I. So in order to, instead of uh, uh, removing the innately arising self-grasping, this philosophy seems to uh, strengthen our own self-grasping. The stronger one's grasping towards oneself is uh, <coughs> uh, one's own attitude towards whatever is mine becomes stronger. And then my possession, my friends, my body, with regards to all of them, our intensity of grasping arises. The more we cling at an eye, and based on that, we have again grasping at my enemy. And based on that, we are attached towards oneself and whatever is in the domain of uh, oneself and which uh, hatred towards the others. So based on that, uh, Tharmakiti says that based on these two divisions, all the uh, anger and attachment arises and through them distorted actions arises. <coughs> the more uh, one's uh, clinking or of an eye is in them. People tend to get so irritated if the intensity of the grasping of self 
and the e is quite strong in them. Whereas for those who have no strong grasping, or if it's not intense, then they don't feel that irritated, if, even if you try to play with them. Look at the dogs. Those who are impassioned and who are egoistic, even among the dogs, <coughs> they don't have company. And the moment that dog comes, all the other dogs run away. So that's the reason why Buddha says that thought of I is a demon or demonic thought or the thought of the demon or mind of demons. <coughs> the, the aggregates are empty of this. There is no self in it. So the physical body or the psychophysical aggregates are empty of that self. There isn't any distinct uh, honor within the body or the mind. So my, uh, body and mind are, or the elements, uh, or parts are empty of such an honor. Because of that, the kind of I that we so cling to as substantially, independently, eternally existent, that is not there. But that doesn't mean that I doesn't exist. There is an I. Because of that, we say, I have this feeling, and whether or something, whether or not something is good or not, also depends on uh, one's own feeling. So, because of that feeling of dissatisfaction and feeling of happiness, based on that, we say this is good, that is bad, right? So, without <coughs> correlating them with one's uh, feeling, you cannot claim something bad or good. Since we don't wish for suffering and we only wish for happiness because of that we make a distinction between bad or good based on our own feelings based on our mm, uh, feelings of happiness and suffering if such an eye doesn't exist we cannot make a distinction between my mind and dear you can also speak of Buddha or sentient beings so therefore <coughs> to claim that there is no I at all would be really uh, Foolish. <coughs> Some people without real understanding of Buddha Dhamma thinking even uh, without proper knowledge seem to uh, be you know, confronted with this idea that there is no self at all. But this is not the case. Even though uh, it says there is no self. In uh, uh, Chantikri text, just as we label a carriage based on its parts, in the same way, based on the different psychophysical elements, we define or designate or impure a self. So this kind of uh, narration is also, uh, this kind of statement is also in the sutra. It's derived from that. Just as we try to label uh, a carriage, a horse carriage, based on the different parts, in the same way, and through that designation, because of uh, the assembly of the different parts, we can have a carriage. If you try to find a carriage within its different parts, like the wheels, all the nails, all the different structures, if you individually, if they are all a carriage, all of them are not. These are just mere parts. But assembly of these parts uh, give rise to an imputation, and then it functions. In the same manner, based on different uh, psychophysical elements or aggregates in the same manner. So this is, the first one is a metaphor and the second one is the real meaning. In the same way, based on the five aggregates like our form, our feeling, discernment, our composition of factor and consciousness, based on these five elements, we impute or describe a self. Apart from that, there isn't any independent, distinct, autonomous self without depending on these aggregates. So based on these aggregates, we can only impute an I, and based on this, I can only exist. So, so there isn't any self, substantially autonomous self apart from the body and the mind. Then as we go deeper, as we go higher within the body, if you try to find 
a tangible or pointable concrete self. Even though we do have this kind of understanding, then when it comes to further analysis, people tend to feel that they must be in a self pointable, and because of that, they believe that uh, consciousness, within consciousness, we should be able to find a self. Even Buddhism itself, when it comes to the view of selflessness, or uh, we have different mm, uh, kinds of selflessness or different uh, uh, subtleties of selflessness. Uh, apart from Buddhism, the rest of the philosophical traditions believe in eternal, unitary, independent self. <coughs> so the answers are two. Uh, one answered by the Buddhism and one answered by the uh, non-Buddhists. The second question is what it is an end to the self. Oh, sorry, a beginning to the self. Those who cr believe in creation, for them, uh, they, they say that this is a beginning because, for example, take the example of Christianity. This life it has itself is planned and created by uh, God. For, uh, this itself has a lot of benefits. It will really uh, enhance your own devotion and make you and, and enhance your submission uh, to the God and make you closer to the God. And this will really make this uh, life worthwhile since this is actual God's creation. So I know a good Christian uh, practitioner uh, and uh, I know him and I ask him uh, what is wrong if you believe in uh, rebirth? And he said this is uh, not possible because this life is the only creation of uh, the only life created for us by uh, the God. And so, so therefore you have an attitude of uh, like uh, closeness, like looking at him as like a father who created you. And accordingly, uh, it makes a lot of sense in, in order to uh, act according to the uh, aspirations or teachings of father. So those who uh, believe in the creation, for them, uh, for them uh, since this life itself is being uh, it was created by a creator, for them, there is a beginning. But then there are some who believe in creation, but still believe in uh, a unitary, eternal, independent self, but still believe on one side in the karma and rebirth. For them, ultimately, they believe that the great Brahma has uh, created or planned this world or universe. For them, ultimately, there is uh, a beginning, an end to the beginning. So with regards to Jainism, I'm not sure why uh, don't they believe in Creator. And that's not clear in our text. And I was not able to get uh, uh, some satisfactory uh, clarification from my Jain friends. <coughs> so from their perspective, I'm not really sure. But in Buddhism, Ms. Olin says, I keep on t uh, yeah, tea offering. <laughs> Take your teeth, that's what he's all in said. It's, if it's convenient, it, it's good to um, uh, give for uh, cold water uh, to people. Otherwise, uh, it's quite hot, and on top we have this sunny water. Uh, I think, and on top of this, if you drink a hot tea, what will happen? Instead, isn't it better to have? Cold water? What do you feel? <coughs> so this answers the question 
uh, of whether there is a beginning. So, in Buddhism, whether there is an ad to uh, a self in the beginning, first we have to think uh, the foundation on which we label uh, a self. So, that means the five aggregates or the five psychophysical elements that constitute a self. And then since a uh, physical body is born in this very life, we have to think of the uh, mind which has continued from past lives. <coughs> so we have to see if there is a beginning to the continuity of mind. Whatever uh, is in the nature of birth, <coughs> among these, if you look, uh, there are two uh, distinctions, one which is animated or which is sentient and one which is not, what is not, uh, one which is not sentient. So in both of them, they all are born for their own causes and conditions. <coughs> so whether be it internal sentient beings or external non-sentient, Objects, all of them are born from causes and conditions. <coughs> As for the causes and conditions, there are two kinds, substantial and cooperative, one which actually becomes the real cause, which evolves itself into the result. And it's another new uh, form, uh, version, to help uh, the creation of that new form. That's what we call its conducive factors or cooperative factors. Look at the pillars here uh, and the, the, the woods, all these, if you look at them, they are actually cut from a tree and that tree was again born from its own, like you can call it mother or something like that, but some substantially it has caused it, so it, had, it has continued from that. That's what we call a substantial cause. And then crafting or uh, cutting the trees uh, and then modification of the trees. All these are uh, like corporate factors in order to give rise to this pillar. In the same way, if you look at the external non sentient objects, all of them are born from their own concordant causes and conditions. So this is a uh, law of nature. This is not made by karma. This is just nature. <coughs> Whether it be external and in habitat, if you look at them, the elements, if you, you know, look at uh, the, the, the derivatives of the element, like the uh, like objects we see, they are all born for their own elements, like fire, earth, and so forth. And these are all further born from their own cause and condition. So, whether, why, so how this came to be connected with our karma is something we really need to consider. Otherwise, uh, substantial, on the low, substantial level, they are born from their own causes and conditions. <coughs> so mind being luminous and has the nature of luminosity, how can uh, a non-luminous form uh, uh, give rise to this uh, luminous body. I'm not hearing the Tibetan. Uh, are you hearing the translation? Sorry, now it has come back again. <coughs> so, external object. So if you look at uh, how things are born, they are not born from uh, physical forms which are, <laughs> are not uh, luminous. So therefore, Nimdu. Let's go.
अंदर का लाइट चला गया सब ट्रांसलेशन नहीं आ रहा नहीं आ रहा नहीं आ रहा है ट्रांसलेशन नहीं आ रहा है सब नहीं आ रहा है अब नहीं है था धीरे संगमत संजय जब दे रही मैं कायर ते ताश है दे ता यूं मत आ या क्या हुआ क्या हुआ सब चला गया पावर कहाँ से पहले से होना चाहिए ना यार क्या आप लोग कंपनी है कौन सा कंपनी है फक So will you start a good life or not? So I'm not able to hear His Holiness. So if you're not getting the translation, it's because I'm not hearing His Holiness. Sorry for this. It's a technical problem. We translate it can't do anything about this. <laughs> are you hearing? Can you? Are you getting? Are you getting transmission? No. Are you getting? Are you getting? No. Hello, are you getting? Are you getting? My test one, three? No? They said power is cut. Lock shit. They had his machine at that moment. Sura. Lock shit on shit. Then yes, it's machine. Lock shit on shit. ニュースは終わりだったようだ。終わりだ。それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで、それで
<coughs> because we have so many people gathered, there is a danger uh, of people are being killed in rushes. So therefore, uh, we thought uh, it's better not to go uh, to the main temple, but do the uh, our common <coughs> aspiration for here, with here. So what is your opinion? Are you going to do it here? Since people want to agree. So, people agree. So there is no rush from your part, from our part. We'll just conduct uh, uh, the common uh, prayer together here uh, for the well-being of uh, Tibet, Tibetan cause. So his is like, Asking again, what is the condition of the mics or the transmitters? No. Still no. No. Mio, mio. <laughs> <laughs> so we have some Eden translators here, and then transmissions are being supplied by a company here, but we are not getting any good transmission right now. And now current or the the current has broken off the electricity. It's not there for the translators. So because of that, there's a break in the test station. Is someone still asking? No. Somebody go to the other side and uh, uh, give me the message if it's all fine. That's what he's only saying. <coughs> when the light comes, please inform us. <coughs> no, no. ก็สุดเป็ดก็ชูสุดใครเนี่ยโลดมาราจิโดนี่เคสไอ้ดินิชิเชสเคสไอ้ดีกับดูเลยสินะครับนี่ก็ลำเล่นชนหนิงก็ม
all these major religious traditions thrive harmoniously. Of course, there is one's own respect in devotion to one's own religious tradition, but becoming impartial and uh, being, becoming discriminative is another. So, of course, different religious traditions have different philosophical ideas, and because of that, lots of debates go on between the different philosophical traditions. Uh, but in Buddhism, we use this uh, the philosophical uh, critical analysis in order to know the reality. And therefore, we need to use the facility that we have uh, that is given, uh, that is found in the tradition itself to make a critical uh, analysis of the teachings. If you don't use that, then it's no use. Uh, and then, of course, there are different uh, ideas and uh, debates between the different scholars in Nalanda and in Tibet also. There has been this tradition. And <laughs> where uh, there has been this uh, kind of uh, t the, the, the various different uh, tr uh, religious traditions which have philosophical ideas uh, living together in one country uh, with that, that in turn also uh, gives the p uh, people opportunity to uh, live in harmony and so all the religious traditions which have the same kind of practices and, uh, and then, uh, practically, there are all these different r religious traditions in the world, and uh, therefore it is uh, very important to, ha to live in harmony. So I make this effort to, uh, uh, for uh, religious harmony. And uh, when, uh, at times when there is terrorism um, from some uh, section of the Muslim uh, community, uh, then the people tend to generalize the, the, uh, that the all Muslims are bad. Uh, but that should not be done. And so a uh, few people who may be claiming to be uh, practitioners of their religion, uh, mischievous people, and by using that as a reason, if you, uh, if you, if you cover the whole religion uh, w with the bad name, uh, criticizing it, saying that it's not uh, generalizing that uh, all Muslims are uh, rather mischievous, it's not good, I say that. I mean, mischievous peoples are always there in the different traditions in within the Hindu, uh, Christians, uh, uh, Buddhists, and uh, Muslims, and so forth. And so this is something understandable. And so by, uh, it's not logical to try to draw the general, generalized idea that all the, uh, the whole religion is uh, bad. Um, and so uh, just like in the case of the uh, Buddhist, we cannot say uh, the uh, few Buddhists uh, represent the whole of Buddhism. Uh, the mischievous people re cannot re represent these different religions. And so this is very important to keep in mind, the, the religious harmony in the world. And so uh, despite all the diff uh, different philosophical uh, differences, the, the purpose of all these religions is to make, uh, to, to produce good pr people. For some, the creator God uh, is uh, a very good reason to, to follow the will of the Creator God. It is a very good reason to, uh, to uh, adopt uh, their good principles. And uh, whereas others say that uh, because of one's own action, if you do some action which is bad, then it's going to be, uh, you, you are going to suffer the consequences and that, that, that kind of teaching are more appropriate and suitable. And therefore, the practice of compassion, love, um, tolerance and so forth uh, based on the idea of the, the, the different ideas or according to the theistic religion and uh, non-theistic religions uh, uh, which talk about the causality are uh, 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 very uh, appropriate for different uh, people. The Buddha himself uh, sometimes has said that, that 
there, there is an indication that there is an independent I, a person, where he says that the, the five uh, aggregates or the are the burdens, and the, 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 the one who takes this burden is the person. And so I, that indicates that. And so in accordance with the uh, di dispositions, predispositions, dispositions of the disciples, the followers, the Buddhas have the Buddha had Shakyamuni had different given different teachings according to the needs. There is a reason to do that because the different people need different teachings. Today we have uh, almost seven billion people who have various dis predispositions, mental dispositions, and therefore the diff varieties of uh, religions and traditions are very suitable, very good. And therefore it is important for everybody to ha to uh, have uh, to afford to do I mean uh, to uh, create religious harmony in the world. So of course, philosophically, there are differences in the different religions, but then the main purpose, the message is uh, that of love and compassion. The, in, in the Indian uh, former Prime Minister Adwani uh, has once told me that uh, in India, the, the different religions, the philosophical thoughts, uh, followers of these various philosophical thoughts have criticized each other, debated with each, uh, with each other, but they respect the others. Uh, he, his example is the Charvaka uh, school of thought, uh, who, which was criticized by the other uh, schools of thought in India, like Sankhya and so forth, and because they, they all of which considered uh, this particular tradition as being nihilistic. But then the follower of the, those practitioners of the, that particular uh, religious thought is a ri called Rishi. In English, uh, the, the, the term may be translated as sage. And so this is a basis for India's, uh, in India's successful democracy, he had said. So although uh, the different religious uh, philosophical traditions criticized each other, were debated with each other, still they respected each other. And so this is very good, isn't it? And so I usually say that the uh, Charvakas who are regarded as nihilists, so this has this tradition of uh, respecting other religious traditions had been there in the past in India, in ancient India. And so today we have lots of non-believers and we need to believe, we need to respect them because we are all the same. We, we, all of us are same in, this, in that we want happiness and not suffering. And so we cannot just uh, uh, disregard them by saying that, oh, they, this person has a nihilistic, hedonistic idea and non, they don't believe in any religion and so forth. And so Indian constitution itself, it, it follows secularism. Uh, secularism here is not uh, to, to mention that we are against religion, but we respect uh, the, uh, all the religions as well as non-believers. And so uh, this is a general uh, idea or, uh, of how we could, uh, go about with the religious harmony. And so with Buddhism, after Buddha became enlightened, uh, uh, he first turned the wheel, first wheel of Dharma in Varanasi, which is on the Four Noble Truths, which was taught rather popularly. And then later on, uh, the teachings were compiled. And so this is something, these are something which are historically recorded. And then in Gridakuta, the vulture peak, the te according to the how the term is terms are used in the Sandinimochana um, uh, Sutra, the Sutra revealing the thought of the Buddha, uh, the second turning of the wheel happened in this Gridakuta, in uh, the vulture mountain, um, where the Buddha gave the teaching on the perfection of wisdom sutras. So this seem, it seems that these, uh, these teachings on the uh, perfection of wisdom, so tr wisdom were not given uh, popularly. For example, if you look at the Heart Sutra, the, uh, we find the discussion between uh, the Shari Shariputra and Avalokiteshvara. But uh, Avalokiteshvara may not have been a, 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 a human being, but he was, yeah, he was a in the form of a god. 
And so the uh, Shariputra, who was in the audience of the, the, uh, of the, uh, of the Buddha, uh, may have seen Avalokiteshvara in the deity form, and uh, therefore he asked the question. And then we find in the Mahayana Sutras that we uh, uh, mention of many different uh, uh, gods and goddesses, and then also uh, hum human beings. As for example, we have the eight uh, great bodhisattvas, the close disciples of the uh, bodhisattvas, uh, the close disciples of the Buddha. Uh, there were eight, and so these teachings uh, were not given in the uh, popularly amongst public. If you visit uh, the Vulture Mountain, Vulture Peak, uh, you can see how small the area is, how small that uh, hill is. But then it seems that the uh, the uh, place uh, when it says there are many, so many uh, different uh, uh, listeners, audience uh, during the Buddha's time on that hill uh, may have been uh, from the perspective of a pure vision. And so there has been this uh, argument that Mahayana is not the teaching of the Buddha and especially the Tantra. And so people have this question. In uh, Maitreya's uh, Sutra Alamkara, there is a uh, one chapter on uh, arguing for, uh, Mahaya for the Mahayana being the teaching of the Buddha, and also uh, Nagarjuna has done that, and also Bhav Viveka has written on in his Madhyamaka Lok. Madhyamaka uh, Hridaya, it's very great detailed uh, explanation of how Buddha, uh, Mahayana is Buddhism. And so, uh, in, and other masters also have done that. So the, the reason why there has been so, th there are so, so many debates about Mahayana not being teaching of the Buddha is because it was taught not, uh, not popularly. But then it's uh, quite problematic if we have to also decide that the teaching of the, the, the Mahayana teachings are not the Buddha's teaching, but it was uh, the teachings were created or uh, written by other uh, masters of India in the past. And so, in the uh, if you look at the Pajaparamita Sutras, it explains in great detail uh, uh, on certain topics which are taught in the, for example, in the uh, Four Noble Truths and so forth. So. If you look at the Vinaya teachings uh, and uh, the, the uh, Pali teachings, uh, if there is not much reasoning that is used to prove things, but yeah, you rather resort to scriptural authority. But if you look at the Pramana t uh, system, then uh, the Four Noble Truths are actually uh, proved as being truth uh, through reasoning rather than resorting to uh, any uh, scriptural authority. And so in the Pali tradition where it is taught, there is uh, things are all uh, selfless. And also that, that uh, nirvana is peace. And uh, in other words, the four uh, seals of the Dharma, which are taught in the Pali tradition as well, and these are made very alive and uh, in the uh, uh, Mahayana teach, uh, scriptures. So, if you have to say these teachings are uh, Mahayana, Mahayana teachings are not Maha Buddha's teachings, then it would be very difficult to stand the position. And so, uh, there cannot be two different uh, Buddhas who uh, could be teachers of one uh, Buddhist traditions, uh, Buddhist tradition. And so, uh, we have to. Ex uh, except that the Shakyamuni Buddha was uh, the, the one who taught this. So, uh, the teachings of the Buddha. So, in the uh, uh, first the Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths, and then uh, the, uh, the Third Noble Truth has, is explained in greater detail in the Parijaparamita Sutras. And uh, within the Parijaparamita Sutra explanations, there are those of the uh, explanations gotten to the uh, uh, got into Chetamatra and, uh, uh, and then also got, uh, got into uh, Maitreya's uh, Mahayana Sutra Alamkara, uh, which in turn uh, makes, uh, explains the Buddha nature, uh, the uh, clear light nature of the mind, which is the subjective mind, more uh, in, gra in greater detail. And so this, according to the Gongdang Rinpoche, is to lead the disciples progressively into Tantra as well. 
And so uh, in Tantra, the, the use of a uh, very more subtle uh, level of the mind is used. And uh, therefore, we have the, uh, the four different tantris, uh, Tantra sets, which uh, uh, differ in the profundity of the explanation or presentation of the uh, subjective uh, clear light mind. And so the first noble, the four noble truths teachings on the four noble truths are the foundation of the teaching of the Buddha, and then, and so you lay the foundation like you're laying a foundation of a house, and then uh, next comes the teaching on the uh, Prajaparamita Sutras, uh, which teach the, the emptiness, which is the, uh, the, the uh, object, uh, uh, the clear light, which is the object. And then uh, uh, next comes those teachings on the Tathagata Garbha, which uh, relates the, the subjective mind of clear light. And then you go into the clear light mind in a subtler level in the Tantra. And so these Tantric teachings were not given in public as well. Uh, they, were, uh, they have uh, uh, developed or come uh, according to the uh, development of spiritual development of the uh, practitioners who have pure vision. So in their pure visions, then they can uh, see all these different deities. And so, for example, in the case of um, the... Uh, 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 in the case of certain uh, lower tantras, there is the uh, Buddha himself arising in the form of the main deity, in the form of a, a while being a monk. And then uh, th th there is also uh, others, which uh, in the case of Vajradhatu uh, uh, Mandala, the, uh, the Buddha arises in the form of a deity and many other deities in the retinue and uh, so forth. And so these are the teachings uh, which are practiced rather secretly and as it was known in India. And so Tantra has to be practiced rather secretly and hidden in a hidden manner. And uh, in uh, Bodhisattva Charya Avatara, there is mention of um, actually uh, practicing the or the secret, the, the holy secret. So that, that uh, secrecy here refers to um, the exchanging self with others and also the practice of uh, giving and taking, which are very difficult for uh, any uh, ordinary person to uh, actually adopt. So secrecy here doesn't have anything to do with being hypocritic. Um, but unless some of the practitioners have reached uh, that stage where they can d do those practices which are taught in the Tantra, I mean, they're they not matured enough for that. Until they are matured enough, it, they cannot uh, receive such teachings. And therefore, uh, these Tantra teachings have uh, come to the uh, different disciples in, uh, in their pure visions. And so, therefore, we cannot say that the teaching, the tantric teaching, cannot come after the teaching of the after the Buddha has uh, popularly, according to popular account, uh, the, the after the Buddha has died, because uh, it can happen even uh, after uh, the Buddha's death. And uh, I know my friends, some of my uh, acquaintances, friends who have pure visions. So even today. The, we can have Buddhas coming in the form of uh, Nirmanakaya, Supreme Nirmanakaya. And so, uh, according to the development of the, uh, the spiritual development of the disciples, they can have pure visions. And so, Buddhas can be anywhere where there is faith and belief and devotion in people. And so, uh, we cannot say the Buddha cannot uh, appear today, be, uh, but he already uh, uh, lived in 2,600 years ago. So, we need to do critical analysis of the teachings and then apply the teaching in, one's, uh, in, in, in oneself so that you remain uh, gain the experiences. In the Sakya tradition, you have the Lung Sema, the scriptural um, uh, validity, the valid uh, master and the valid uh, teaching. And then there is a valid experience. So in, uh, from the point of view of developing this uh, uh, within oneself, we have to first have the experience, the valid experience, by knowing what kind of experience, the uh, development progress you have made. You can tell and what changes have gone into you. Uh, in you, 
and then you will be able to see uh, from your own experience that what the teachings that you have received from the master has actually worked for you therefore the master is an authentic one and therefore you find the master to be a valid uh, master or authentic master and then uh, because the lama uh, has uh, given the teaching or uh, gained the experiences by relying on these scriptures uh, such as the exegetical text, text written by Nagarjuna and so forth. Therefore, uh, the text also can be considered uh, as valid or authentic, authoritative, and in turn, uh, the, the, they, uh, these texts written by the great masters are, uh, have their source in m the teaching of the Buddha himself, and therefore, we can also consider the teaching of the Buddhas, uh, the teaching of the Buddha as auth authentic. And so when Nagarjuna explains Prajaparamita Sutras, uh, and he, he has really uh, made very uh, detailed explanations. So when uh, some Western scholars say that this, these uh, Prajaparamita Sutras and so forth were not taught by the Buddha, I usually argue against them. <laughs> Uh, recently, I met some scholar who said that the uh, Sutra Samuchaya was not written by uh, Master Nagarjuna. But because he said many of the uh, sutras that were quoted in this text uh, were not there during, uh, during the time of the Buddha. But then I said Abhayakara's explanation of this uh, Sutra Samuchaya uh, uh, by Ma Met, uh, Nagarjuna. Uh, in that, uh, Abhaya says, uh, Abhaya, of course, was following Chitamatra. Uh, it was really, he was a really admirer of Chitamatra. And, and he says that Asangas and Nagarjuna have the same uh, thought. They, they come to the same point. So, which I saw in Abhayakara's writing. And so Abhayakara's uh, explanation of Sutra Samuchaya actually uh, uh, accepted uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, the uh, Sutra Samuchaya was actually written by Sut uh, uh, Nagarjuna. And so those who say today that uh, the, uh, these different sutras were not uh, actually taught by the Buddha but written by uh, other Indian masters, I say that the, uh, in, uh, compared, compared to these modern scholars, um, the Nagarjuna, Master Nagarjuna, was more uh, uh, familiar with the Indian history. And so uh, when Nagarjuna came, it was only about 400 uh, years after the Buddha's death, and so he was closer to the Buddha's time, and he was Indian on the second, uh, uh, in, in the second hand, uh, on the other hand, and so he would be more familiar with the Indian history. And Nagarjuna was not somebody who just uh, in, uh, kind of followed things rather blindly, and uh, he he was someone who really did critical analysis of the teaching of the Buddha, him, it's not, but the teachings of the Buddha themselves. And so, such a person cannot say that uh, something which, is not, which was not taught by the Buddha actually is uh, the, the teaching of the Buddha himself. So he knew um, medicine, he knew alchemy, uh, chemistry, and he <coughs> And so he, he, he also wrote texts on, uh, I mean, he was a scholar on uh, the uh, language, linguistic. And uh, if you read his uh, uh, fundamental treatise of the Middle Way, uh, the, the, the style of writing is said to be uh, marvelous by uh, modern scholars as well. And so similarly, with regard to the writings of Aryadeva and Dharma Kirti, I mean, their writings are marvelous. And so they were really uh, great uh, uh, linguists as well. So with regard to uh, epistemology and logic, um, uh, we, we can, I mean, it's, some, it's a topic which is general. But uh, uh, 
epistemology in general is something common to both Buddhists and non-Buddhists, but when we talk about, uh, when we refer to Pramana Vartika by Dharmakirti, then that becomes a pr uh, epistemology, a text on epistemology um, of Buddh Buddhism. And therefore, Nagarjuna accepted what is not against reason, uh, whereas what can be proved through reason. And uh, whereas when something th that, is, that was taught by the Buddha is found to be uh, rather illogical when he uh, checked through reasoning, then he uh, rejected to, uh, uh, to accept them literally. And so such a person a great, uh, of great, uh, this kind of caliber, uh, I, I would rather choose uh, uh, believe more in the Nagarjuna than the modern scholars. And so he uh, accepted the Hamayana to be uh, 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 teaching of the Buddha. And then with regard to Tantra, so you may, you may, of course, many of you have heard this story, but some of you may not have heard, not heard it. Uh, Nagarjuna uh, has written uh, the text on the generation stage of uh, Goya Samaja, and Arya Deva has written the uh, Chari, uh, Charya Melapaka, or uh, which is a commentary on uh, Master Nagarjuna's text. And also, uh, he has written a text which is called uh, Purifying the Mind written by Aradeva. It is found in the Tanjur uh, collection of the Tibetan uh, canonical texts. Once uh, a Sanskrit scholar by the name of Upadeya, uh, who was a great scholar of Sanskrit uh, in Varanasi, uh, who became later on a Buddhist, um, attracted to, uh, he became attracted to Buddhism and then later became Buddhist. So he was doing, uh, at one time, he was doing research on uh, Gala Chakra, Tantra. And uh, in his research, during, while he was doing his research, he went to Nepal. And at that time, while he was doing the research, he found uh, one um, a Sanskrit uh, a text, which was written on a palm leaf, palm leaf, uh, written in Sanskrit. Uh, he found a single folio. So when he read this, uh, what was written on the palm leaf, the content is uh, about the highest yoga tantra, which uh, talks about uh, using the sensual uh, pleasure uh, into, in, into path. So the style of writing, he said, was the same as the, the, uh, the style of writing in the 400 verses of, uh, 400 verses of Madhyamaka. And so he was able. To, he said he was able to confirm uh, that con uh, that this was. Uh, he was uh, able to confirm from that that uh, Arya Deva actually practiced tantra. Uh, the, the great scholar Arya Deva practiced tantra, and then in Chandra Kirti, uh, Chandra Kirti has written the, pra the uh, this uh, the bright lamp, which is a commentary on the five stages. In the, on the Goya Samaja, and uh, he, he, the, uh, the scholars also say that this style of writing in this text and the style of writing in the Prasanapada are also same. And so this, uh, there were great masters in India who actually practiced Tantra. And then Shandarakshita, who was a master of uh, uh, Kamalashila, of whose text the stages of meditation we are going to go through, And so uh, Kamala Shila also uh, uh, accepts that there is a Buddhist Tantra. And then later on, when Adisha came to Tibet, uh, he wrote the, uh, the Bodhipath Paradhipa, the uh, lamp for the enlighten, uh, uh, path to enlightenment. In, in there also, we find mention of the, uh, that there being Tantra in Buddhism. But later on, uh, people misused Tantra. Uh, they, they improperly, I mean, used Tantra improperly by using women and drink, uh, alcohol and so forth. But this is uh, something th that is uh, that should be blamed to the individuals themselves rather than the teaching, the tradition itself. 
because there are such, there are such mis uh, people who misuse them, uh, we cannot say that Tantra is not good. So unless you have reached a point where you can use the, uh, the, the Tantra in, with the, through in the skillful means, uh, the, uh, realization uh, of skillful means, then uh, by using the Tantra improperly, you will fall into, ta uh, into hell. And so uh, there is one uh, uh, Professor Joshi, uh, who was a Pratila University professor, uh, he is no more, of course, now, but he has written a text. He, he, he uh, gave me a copy of that text. Uh, he, th he's in this book, he says, one reason why Buddhism declined in, Buddh in India was because of uh, misuse of Tantra. And the second reason is because the monks became very wealthy and uh, the monks took interest in making wealth. And that also in turn caused the decline of Buddhism in uh, India. So, as I said earlier, we have the first teaching of turning of the wheel as the fundamental, the foundation of the teaching, and then the, the Vajaparamita Sutras next, uh, 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 where it teaches that of the uh, emptiness um, uh, very thoroughly. And also, uh, from that, we can understand the, the how to overcome the delusions, the, the afflictive, the destructive emotions. And uh, also, it explains in great detail that of those of the Four Noble Truths. And then there are teachings which uh, are, were given by the Buddha, uh, uh, a teaching about the three natures by uh, having three uh, characteristics in mind the buddha taught the three natures and so that was uh, for those who cannot take these teachings of the prajaparamita sutras literally uh, the buddha skillfully taught this and then next comes the teachings on the clear light the subjective mind of clear light which is uh, as i earlier referred in the mahayana uh, uttara tantra of maitreya and then in the 7th century, the B Buddhism started coming to India, um, to t from India to Tibet. So during the time of the Songzen Ten King, Songzen Gampo, who became interested in Buddhism, and then later on, mainly this, uh, the spread of Buddhism or dissemination of Buddhism in Tibet was uh, the, the responsibility or the work was carried out by uh, King Chisong Detsen in the 8th and 9th centuries, who was helped by uh, uh, Shantarakshita and then also uh, the the powerful uh, master Lobin Rambuchi or Guru Rambuchi Guru Padma Sambhava and so the abbot Shandarakshita. So we call these three the emperor. Uh, we have the trial of the uh, abbot, the, uh, the master Guru Padma Sambhava and the emperor, the king. So with, uh, uh, thanks to them, the Buddhism uh, was established and has been established very firmly on the soil of Tibet. And uh, then Ken, uh, the abbot Shandarakshita took the mainly took the responsibility of teaching the Tibetans at that time, and so he also uh, gave the monastic uh, ordination. And then uh, with, uh, Master Padma Sambhava uh, took the responsibility of overcoming the obstacles and uh, of uh, establishing Buddhism firmly on the Tibetan soil and also he gave very sacred teachings to a few select disciples like the 25 uh, uh, disciples and then after the Shandarakshita uh, passed away uh, uh, the loving uh, master Kamala Shila was invited to Tibet as it was uh, actually um, uh, prophesized by Shadarakshita himself. So I will teach mainly Kamala Shila's text. Kamala Shila's text, although it's a very short text, but it shows the whole range of practice uh, of how to go about with the path and then also how to achieve the, uh, the goal, the, res uh, the final uh, result. And there, is th there are three bo books of these stages of meditation. In the first book, 
uh, it says the Tison Detsen, the king, requested this teaching, and therefore this. Uh, at the request of the King Tisong Detsen, uh, uh, the uh, Kamala Shila wrote this text. That, was the, that this is what is mentioned in the first book of the stages of meditation. And so it was. Uh, it seems uh, uh, it's quite clear that uh, it was written for the Tibetans, uh, for the, the, the Dharma to spread in Tibet. And uh, I received the teaching on this text of Kamala Shila from Sakya um, uh, Abbot uh, Sangye Tenzin. Uh, it was here in Bodh Gaya I, I, where I met the, the abbot. Uh, when he, he was at that time, in those times, teaching at the Tibetan uh, University uh, in Sarnath. And so when we were talking, he said, he, he told me that he received teachings on this, on, the, uh, uh, on Kamala Shila's stages of meditation. And so the time when he received it was at Samye Monastery um, from uh, one master uh, uh, who had come from Kham, uh, the Kham region of Tibet. Uh, one uh, abbot uh, sat on a th uh, throne which was said to uh, have been the throne where Shandarakshita himself uh, uh, sat and gave teachings. So uh, although Kim, uh, Kempo uh, Sangye Denzin did not have any uh, time to check who that abbot uh, Dzogchen Lama, Dzogchen Master was, who, ga who, was who gave this teaching on the three books of the stages of meditation, uh, he told me that he received uh, this teaching on these the three books of the stages of meditation. As soon as I heard this, uh, from him, I felt that there's, I mean, it, it, it was indispensable for me to, re not to, uh, uh, for me to receive the teaching on these three texts from him. So, from Partner University, uh, Partner Museum, I think uh, we ha got the text. Uh, I sent somebody to get the text uh, and I received teaching from uh, him, from San uh, Kempo Sangye Tenzin. So, please raise your hands who have the books uh, for the teaching the preliminary teaching book. Uh, there is text in Chinese as well. These are the stages of meditation. Do the newcomers from Tibet have this book? I will read through the book and, and then give uh, short explanations here and there. But uh, having heard me, don't just leave the book away, throw the book away, saying that, oh, I have, I have received this teaching now and I can just get rid of it. Don't think that. But perhaps you may not face any difficulty if you take it across the border into Tibet. So read it sometimes and uh, then uh, make some notes also uh, of my comments and use those comments as the seed and uh, but uh, uh, you should study this book uh, over and also you can add m other books to study the text and it would be very good to uh, uh, go, go through or read other texts So in the preface, of course, there are some mentions of uh, there are certain uh, things that maybe could cause uh, the Tibetans from Tibet some problem if they took it through across the border. So you can tear this page, his song says. So, look at page number 10 in English. The in the second, stage, second volume of the stages of meditation by Arya Kamala Shila is pa on page 9. <laughs> on page 9, the title is given, and then on page 10. Uh, 
Uh, those who, those of you who have uh, the green book, with, uh, which has both in Tibetan and English, look at page number 19. Of course, you have the table of content. In the Indian language, Bhavan Karama, and in the Tibetan language, Gomrim Parva Homish. So this translates as the, the, sta the second volume of uh, the middle volume of uh, the stages of meditation, or Homish to the Youthful Manjushri. So the title. Uh, stages of meditation here. Uh, meditation here refers to uh, the meditation in the context of uh, uh, study, reflection, and meditation. So the meditation refers to that. So which it refers to in, uh, in turn refers to uh, getting uh, being uh, familiar, familiarization. And so you have to put effort. By putting effort and familiarizing with something is called meditation. So a person uh, puts effort and um, makes himself or herself familiar with the subject, and that is called uh, uh, meditation or getting acquainted. Acqu uh, getting acquainted. So having thought over, uh, gone over the text or gone over the subject, for example, compassion, uh, which is uh, this uh, attitude where you can't bear the suffering of other sentient beings and wish them to out of suffering. And so for here you have to know how sentient beings are suffering and also you have to hold the sentient beings dear and so by uh, holding them dear and thinking about their suffering and wishing them suffering out of suffering, you, you will feel that this is something very precious. It's very good. And therefore you have reached that of the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the experience or the wisdom arising through contemplation or reflection. And so you have to think about the benefits and the co of these uh, practices and having thought over it, or, or thought it over and over again, then um, you, you feel that this is really something which must be developed within yourself. <coughs> and so having developed that conviction, then you uh, familiarize your mind with this compassion. And having done, uh, having familiarized your mind with compassion over and over again, and when you, I mean, there, there comes a time when your whole body shakes and your, the hairs on your body kind of stands on end and you, uh, I mean, you shed, uh, called tears flow, I mean, uh, from your eyes. I mean, those I mean, when the things, when they happen through effort, of course, you, you have some experience, a simulated experience sort of thing, which comes through effort. But then, when you come to a point where you have the experience with, uh, of the compassion without having to put much effort, it comes rather spontaneously, then that is the effortless uh, uh, compassion. So, in the beginning, you have some uh, the rough the idea of what compassion is through study. It may be very unstable because you may f find someone who explains it as something else and you might follow that person or another person comes and gives another explanation, you might again follow that person, so it's not very clear, not very, you're not very stable. And so, after having heard the teaching, then you do your critical analysis and read more texts and then gain some conviction, certitude, uh, or certainty in it. And then when you develop that true certitude or certainty in it, that may be considered as a valid uh, cognition, uh, uh, the certitude based on valid cognition. And when that happens, even if somebody comes to challenge you, I mean, you will not be able to, uh, uh, the, the person will not be able to sway you from your conviction. Uh, you can uh, you can actually explain to them. You can reason out uh, to prove them, and uh, even to scientists, you can explain uh, how this can help to live one's life, to have a, uh, to how to, uh, to have a very uh, happy family, happy community, and to have a society and so forth. And so this is uh, what is known as the uh, cert certainty gained through uh, contemplation. And so that must be de developed after developing the first uh, stage. Oh. And then comes the uh, meditation. 
and so which, uh, through which we have to make change in our mind. So that is about meditation, and then the stages here, as I said earlier, uh, referring regarding the uh, the uh, Tha Sutra mantra, this Gada Gada mantra. Of course, in the, in the within that context, you can actually uh, take all the different path systems. I mean, of course, you cannot do them all at one time, uh, simultaneously. But, and secondly, you have to build up the lower ones in order to uh, progress to the higher ones. And so you have to know the right, p uh, uh, the right, the correct path, uh, correctly. The, the it, you have to know its identity, uh, and then you have to follow the the practice in a sequential manner, um, rather than disorderly manner. And so you have to, f uh, you have to actually make progress rather sequentially. And then the number of practices uh, also uh, should be uh, complete and also the, the steps uh, should be rather orderly. So here stages show, stages means that the, the path, the different paths are shown here in, step, uh, in a step-by-step -step manner. And then the uh, homage to Manjushri, uh, first uh, the, in the Indian language, uh, with regard to that there are over 100 uh, texts which were translated words of the Buddha and then there are over 200 volumes of texts which were translated words of the Indian uh, commentarial um, uh, t treatises. And so most of these were texts were uh, translated from uh, directly from India, from Indian language, but there are, there is, there is a commentary by uh, the, the master Wenzek uh, who has written the commentary on the, uh, the sutra revealing the thought of the Buddha clearly. And so maybe there are uh, something like 10 different sutras which were translated from uh, in, uh, Chinese, but the rest were all translated, are all translated from India. Of course, even these texts which were translated from, Indi uh, from Chinese uh, actually uh, came from India as well because they were translated from Indian language to Chinese. And so uh, the Tibetan tradition usually uh, says that uh, the, by giving the title in Sanskrit, uh, it shows the authenticity of the source of the teaching, which is India. And then homage to the youthful Manjushri was actually in homage written by the homage by the translator. So this was done in accordance with the, the decree of the Indian, uh, the Tibetan kings, in order to sh uh, in order to show which uh, uh, of the three pitakas the, the different texts belonged to. And so Abhidharma uh, for Abhidharma, you have Manjushri as the deity of uh, homage. And for the sutra, uh, you have the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas as the objects of homage. And then for Vinaya, you have the omniscient, uh, ma the omniscient one as the homage, uh, object of ho homage. And so, uh, because it ha deals with the very subtle uh, uh, levels of the uh, causality and so forth, and therefore, in order to uh, know which uh, which of the three pitakas these different texts belong to, you have the, these different ways of paying homage to the uh, uh, different deities and uh, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and so forth. So reading through the text on page 10, I shall briefly explain the stages of meditation for those who follow the system of Mayana Sutras, the intelligent who wish to actualize omniscience extremely quickly should make deliberate efforts to fulfill its causes and conditions. <laughs> it is possible for omniscience to be produced without, uh, not possible to, for omniscience to be produced without causes because if it were, everything could always be omniscient. If things were produced without reliance on something else, they could exist without constraint. There would be no reason why everything could not be omniscient. So, what this shows is the omniscient state uh, should be uh, attained 
uh, in reliance on causes and conditions, which means that an uh, omniscient uh, state cannot come about naturally, uh, is uh, not like a creator god. So uh, the, the uh, omniscient state is itself uh, something which has come through causes and conditions, and therefore you have to have the complete causes and conditions to reach that. In order to make change in our mind, uh, leave alone uh, uh, the, the omniscience, but in order to just become a professor, a great scholar, I mean, he, uh, somebody cannot become a scholar or a professor just uh, at birth. And if you uh, uh, and also not uh, by just uh, sleeping, in order to become a professor of an university, you have to study for many years and become a scholar. And similarly, in order to know, in order to reach a state where you know everything, the varieties as well as the suchness at the same time, simultaneously, and you have to have uh, the co the created the causes and conditions and uh, so uh, anything that is produced has to come through causes and conditions and particularly that of omniscience. So philosophically the unique uh, thing about Buddhism is uh, dependent origination. So dependent origination all the Buddhist uh, philosophical thoughts uh, accept that, uh, teach that. In the Vashikas, they also talk about the 12 links of dependent origination. And also we find in the Vinaya, the Vinaya tradition, the, uh, outside the, at the entrance of the uh, monasteries, you have the five uh, part as, as uh, 12 uh, links of dependent origination, uh, five part dependent origination, Bhavana Krama, Bhavana Chakra. So when I visited once Thailand, there was a monastery where you can actually see uh, dead bodies, just dead uh, body which is just uh, uh, dead, uh, and then uh, a dead body which has uh, uh, already been few days and then a few weeks and so forth. So there, there, there are pictures of these. And so these help in meditating on the ugly nature of uh, our uh, existential body. And so the Buddha himself taught the five part uh, Bhavana Chakra, the, si the wheel of life. So, which was written, uh, drawn according to the, at the, at the uh, actually direction of the Buddha himself. In the center of it is, in the center of the uh, life of wheel of life, you. In the second circle. Uh, uh, there is the uh, the higher realms of existence, and then where there is not uh, ex uh, called intense sort of suffering, but then there is uh, uh, sections uh, which are represent the ex uh, the uh, realms where you have uh, extreme uh, suffering. So I'm not sure about uh, how whether. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, out of the six realms of existence, uh, either the non-called uh, anti-gods are included within the gods or not. And so, something which is produced it has to either come to, uh, uh, through uh, without causes. If that is the case, then uh, it, it, it has to ha happen always, whereas if it comes about through uh, inappropriate causes and conditions, unsuitable causes and conditions, so, um, uh, for example, if uh, even the animals know uh, that the things come from its own causes and conditions, suitable causes and conditions, I mean, the animals uh, go to shade when they, are f uh, f uh, when they feel uh, lots of uh, heat, and when they need heat, they, I mean, in winter they go into warm places, and so, this, so things which come from uh, come about, uh, things which are produced, 
uh, are uh, do come from their own appropriate causes and conditions. And then uh, inside the, the six realms, you have another circle which is uh, divided into two parts. One is white in color with uh, humans and uh, gods going upwards, and then the, there's another part which is uh, colored black. And uh, the, you find uh, depiction of um, picture. Uh, uh, you find paintings of uh, beings going actually head down. And so, which are brought about through uh, positive and negative karmas. And so, through uh, negative karmas, then uh, we have suffering, uh, painful suffering. Of course, we do not want suffering. Uh, we, we do not actually uh, look for suffering. But, uh, so, there is nobody who actually intentionally uh, want uh, to create suffering for themselves. But for us, maybe it's a different case. We know that things, that certain things uh, cause us suffering, but still we indulge in them. And then this uh, happiness is uh, said to be uh, the result of uh, valid cognition. And then the, within the results, uh, there are results which are uh, directly brought about by this uh, valid cognition, and then there are indirect uh, uh, results which are brought about indirectly by them. And so what this shows is that the happiness has to come through its own right causes and conditions. So we, what, th what we want is happiness, and so we need uh, the, to create the cause which is right and which is supported by valid cognition as well. And suffering comes from ignorance, which is a misconception, a, a distorted view. Uh, within ignorance, about the, uh, of course, there, is, uh, there are two, uh, two different things. One is mere ignorance, mere uh, not knowing something, and then the other is misconception, misknowledge. And because of this, we have, we cause suffering. And therefore, the karma, the negative karma is created by, uh, 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 because of our uh, misknowledge or ignorance. And so in the center of the uh, Bhavana Chakra, you find uh, the three animals, the pig, then a uh, cock, and then a, um, a snake. And so these three represent or symbolize the ignorance, attachment, and hatred. In, in some paintings you find uh, these three uh, actually uh, holding the, uh, the, the, the pig holding the, uh, the, pig holding the uh, uh, cocks, the hand's uh, the tail, and the hand holding the, uh, the snake's tail, but then other in, other, uh, in other paintings you'll find uh, the pig, uh, in the pig's uh, mouth there is uh, both the cock, uh, hands and, hand and the, the, uh, the snakes. I mean, uh, uh, and so how do we create karma through delusion, through these three poisons? Uh, is uh, represented or depicted in the outer circle of the, uh, the twelve links. First one is an old uh, blind woman, and then the second link is represented by a potter making pots. So, it, which is like uh, actually creating the causes, uh, the positive and negative karmas, which give rise to happiness or suffering and suffering. And so that, that is the uh, formative karma by po uh, represented by poetry. And then the third is, third is consciousness, which is represented by a monkey. So in this way, you have uh, uh, the 12 uh, different links in, this, uh, the, in the outer circle. So uh, the, the, through these twelve links, what is represented is the how we come uh, come uh, come into being in this cycle of existence uh, through our karma, which is in turn created through our three poisons, which get back to the uh, that of ignorance as well. And so the, the person, so he the Buddha's Buddha taught. <laughs> Oh. 
So the Buddha taught selflessness. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, this uh, the Buddha taught how we circle in this samsara uh, we call, uh, uh, the, the wheel turned by that of uh, ignorance uh, which gives rise to uh, the uh, karma and in turn which leaves the imprint on the consciousness and so forth so therefore since all functional things arise only occasionally they depend strictly on cause their causes omniscience too is rare because it does not occur at all times and in all places and everything cannot become omniscient therefore it definitely depends on causes and conditions page 10 or page 19 So when the Buddha t taught the uh, characteristics of suffering, the noble truth of suffering, he gives uh, these four attributes, <coughs> impermanence and so forth. And then the origin of suffering, uh, there are also four characteristics like the origin and so forth. So the, uh, within the origin there is the cause and then uh, the uh, thor the thor uh, the origin, and then the condition, and then that uh, uh, thoroughly that which currently gives rise to something, and so and then uh, when it comes with uh, with regard to cessation, uh, what that re refers to is uh, the, the overcoming of uh, the the certain factors through. Uh, certain appl by applying certain antidotes and so the antidote has to be developed within yourself and therefore you have the cessation and the path and so by applying the antidote then you will uh, reach the, the cessation uh, which is characterized by uh, uh, the, the, the which also has this uh, these four characteristics which are called cessation and then excellence and so forth because it is and then it is also peace And so then the, there is the path, the noble truth of the path, uh, which, is, uh, the, uh, the, which also has these three or four characteristics like the path and uh, the practice. And then the factor uh, uh, given, uh, which liberates you and so forth. And so if you really think about these four noble truths, the teachings with all these uh, 16 characteristics of it, them, and you will really find that re the teaching of the Four Noble Truths is really profound and vast. So these are uh, based on reasoning as well. So suffering comes from their own causes and conditions. F also from among these causes and conditions, you should cultivate correct and complete causes. If you put the wrong causes into practice, even if you work hard for a long time, the desired goal cannot be achieved. It will be like milking a cow's horn. Likewise, the result will not be produced when all the causes are, are put into effect. For example, if the seed or any other cause is missing, then the result is a sprout and so forth will not be produced. Therefore, those who desire a particular result should cultivate its complete and unmistaken causes and conditions. So what this shows is, is the, co the dependence uh, in terms of causality, dependent causality, causal dependence. If you ask what are the causes and conditions of the final fruit of omniscience, I, who am like a blind man, may not be in a position to explain by myself, but I shall uh, employ the Buddha's own words, just as he, he spoke them to his disciples after his enlightenment. So the, there is a mistake in the Tibetan uh, uh, spelling for uh, the, the term reliance. Uh, he said, 
Vajrapani, Lord of the Secret, the transcendent wisdom of omniscience has its roots in compassion and arises from a cause, the altruistic thought, the awakening mind of bodhicitta, and the perfection of skillful means. Theref So this text is a Madhyamaka text, a middle way uh, philosophy, within which there are two divisions, those who uh, uh, accept uh, self-characterized phenomena and those who do not accept it. Uh, the Master Shanti Rakshita and his disciples uh, accept the first, uh, and, and then uh, the uh, and then within the uh, the uh, Savatantrika Madhyamakas, there are two divisions in, uh, as well. Uh, the, uh, the in the Sakya tradition, they are named as higher and lower Savatantrikas uh, because of the following uh, the uh, presentation of the Chitta Matra, the uh, Savatantra Chitta Matra and Sav uh, Yoga Chara Chitta Matra, uh, Savatantra Madhyamikas are called higher uh, Savatantra Madhyamikas, and then uh, the uh, the Sotantika Savdantika Madhyamakas are called lower uh, uh, Madhyamaka. Uh, Kembo uh, Kunga Wangchuk. And I asked once to give a uh, uh, transmission of the uh, Madhyamaka Hridaya, uh, but he said he didn't have the teaching on it. But then I requested him to write a commentary on it so that when he gives the teaching on the commentary, it will be also in uh, the uh, in it will include the the, uh, the transmission on the text as well. And so uh, this text, Madhyamaka Hridaya, the essence of Madhyamaka, or the heart of Madhyamaka, was written by Bhav Viveka. So he was a great scholar, an amazing scholar. If you read his uh, the uh, torch, uh, the uh, the torch of blaz blazing, uh, you you will find how uh, logical he was. How uh, he was. How how. A uh, great logician was he. He was. And so, yes, uh, so Kamala Shila was a follower of the, the Yogacara Savatantrika Madhyamaka, which rejected an, uh, the externality of things. And so all the different uh, philosophical schools within Buddhism uh, teach and assert the uh, causal dependency of things. So even animals uh, to a certain degree know mm, how certain effects come from their cause and conditions. But when you do critical analysis and reasoning, Of course, we know the relationship between cause and effect, that effects come from. There is this indispensable uh, relationship. The effect comes after the, after the cause. But on the other hand, we call the cause of something which helps. It is, an, is something that helps in relation to what it helps. So if there is nothing to be helped, um, nothing which could be helped, then you cannot uh, actually talk about helping something. And therefore, in relation to the effect, the cause is a cause. So cause and effect are only relative. In the sense that something which is brought about by, it, by its cause, in relation to that cause, it is an effect. Whereas something which that cause brings about as its effect is a cause in relation to that effect. Go on. 
again. Uh, so His Holiness doesn't understand why people are clapping. Ready? Get gas. Get gas. Get gas. Sung she gas. Get you la mindu. Get you la mindu. Hello, hello, hello. Get you la mindu. Ya, ding she gang la shugeng sengi yuan la mena. Ding she gang la yuan shugeng sengi yuan la mena. In ji sengi yuan la ya shiro na tuji si. Get you la. Jawab muzik sung kaya mebe cha sung. So we have three things: the action, the actor, and the the act that plays or the thing acted upon. So all these three are also mutually dependent on each other. Relax, rest, rest. Okay. Now silent meditation. That color then comes to your head. Oh, do some more. Do some more. So that would be something. Lock it, lock it. 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 Lock it, lock it.